Hey friends, how are you all doing? It's Lorianne, and if you are new to the channel, you are so welcome. And over here I have... Dorcas. <laughs> of course, most of you guys should know her by now. So today, this video is educational. We are talking relationship. This video fell on my feed, and I took the time to listen to it. And when I listened to it, she came in and she was like, huh, what are you listening to? And we had things that we felt it's the way many women are processing things and if um they are being taught different beliefs that really limiting them from actually making better decisions when it comes to a partner so we wanted to tackle some of those myths beliefs that are wrong in the video and actually give you the correct um knowledge when it comes to relationships so Durka and i will be having something to say as we play the video i'll be stopping and we will voice our own opinion about it and as you guys know i promised you guys the book this week will be bringing out stuff so you guys stay ready stay ready because i have awesome content and it's not just a book but it is mentoring so that you guys actually make the right decision in meeting your god ordained spouse and the secret from 4 26 2020 that i promised you guys let's get started straight as i can because i'm hoping that this helps somebody because as you girls know i'm a matchmaker and for a large part of uh, the end of last year and the beginning of this year i stopped matchmaking and the reason I stopped matchmaking is because I literally was being, I, I can't handle female clients. I was a matchmaker that matched females and I had a few male clients, but predominantly I was matching women. And listen, what I, it was such a valuable lesson for me because what I learned is that the average woman doesn't really want just a good man. She doesn't want a husband. What she's really wanting are these standards or ideas that she has of what a man is supposed to be. But this is nothing what men are. They're, this is not real. So first, I want to say something about uh, what she said, women having uh, false standards. And I felt very much, um, even Durka can agree with me, I felt very much that she is coming from her side of experience her own experience she's have she's teaching from her own experience how she believed women uh think and to my own understanding not all women are like that and many women that are seeking to be married are not gold diggers so based on her experience with the clients she dealt with the clients sound like they also come from the same background as hers so they have a lot in common and it has nothing to do with other women because not all women are the same. I did watch another one of her videos where she claims not all women are the same. But in this case, the way she's explaining this is like all women are the same and we are not all the same. And we don't all believe the same thing or have the same ideas. Or the we all don't have the same um we're all not looking for the same uh specific things in a man that or like yeah the men that we're looking for stick for who men are how they think what they value it's just this preconceived you know idea that women have of who men should be but this is not reality okay so when she says um, a pre preconceived idea of, of, of who a man should be, that's subjective. Like her ideal man may not be my ideal man. So you can't put it all under one umbrella and say that we're all superficial. Some women aren't. Yes, there are shallow um, people out there and that's that's both genders that's not only one specific gender so you can't really put it all under one umbrella and say 
everyone's all superficial in what they're what they're looking for in a a um a partner and another thing is like i said earlier the type of women she's actually dealing with i believe she may be different now but from the background she's coming from her experience from what i pick up even the women she's training come from the same background and some of these women uh, they don't want to do the hard work they because she is a matchmaker of course as a matchmaker everybody come to you because they can't do this thing they can't meet the person they want to meet and they want you to um connect them hook them up with somebody um who can give them what they want so now i'd like to say that now we really can't say that the people that she was working with were a certain way or a certain type of group of people i feel like when you actually advertise yourself or advertise what you're what you're planning on guaranteeing people see there there's a fine line between saying that there's a possibility and oh you're going to get this like after 30 days you'll be married after you know guaranteeing someone that this is what's going to happen you can't guarantee anything when it comes to matchmaking because in the end the two people that you match are going to have to see if they themselves are compatible with one another if they themselves see that they can see a future with themselves with each other so i feel like maybe when um she was advertising her her um her i program. guess her her program she was probably maybe over de well over promising and under delivering i would say so literally the standards here that i see consistently in women that stay single do not get married and the difference between women and wives is understanding in one that men are not women He's not going to be your best friend like your best girlfriend. You can't talk to him like that. They don't talk like that. They don't talk that much. They're not so sensitive and, and girly the way we are as women. So if you're expecting a man to be all super sensitive and so considerate and just so everything like your girlfriends, you're barking up the wrong tree. He's going to hurt your feelings all the time. I definitely disagree with that um, she said men can't be sensitive men don't talk a lot and men can't be your friends like <laughs> men talk oh, yeah. when a man is interested in you they will talk when a man cares about you and makes you their best friend they can talk what is a relationship when you can't sit and talk to your partner what is a relationship when you can't have conversation with your partner are you in, in are you like signing up for um what do you call it boot camp military boot camp no it's a relationship you have to be able to sit with your partner and have conversation talk joke have fun and the way she's making it sound is because of the kind of past she's from but we'll talk more as we go ahead or else you're going to feel like he doesn't communicate because you're, you're holding these standards like he's a girl i'm sorry leave that to your gay guy friends or leave that to your guy that your bestie guys that talk kind of like girls the your man that you're going to marry is not going to be like that right? The second standard is this. You're comparing good men to, I can't say this, F boys. I'm just going to say it. You're comparing good men to the men that you've experienced previously who were not ready to be husbands that you were just dating, messing around with. I mean, literally, there's a distinct difference between marriage material, men who are ready, who are ready to be husbands, and these F boys that you've been messing around with in out of these situationships with for years. And so now you have this standard for a man and a husband based on these dudes 
that had just been play play, playboys, fun, boy toys, whatever you want to call it, girls, okay? You can call it whatever. I don't really um, agree or disagree much to this because, yes, as women, we do make uh, little mistakes when you meet a new person and you start comparing or maybe the other person who was not so serious with you maybe all they used to do was spend money on you and you meet this other person who's seriously um who's serious about you but they don't spend money like that and you start comparing them so that is possible women do do that i do believe that um even though i don't be agree with everything else but now you set this standard to say he's supposed to look like Thank this, you. he's supposed to act like that. Oh, you know what? He's too corny. Yeah. He, he yeah, likes he me too to much. Him. He texts I'm me too way. much. Yeah, because the the men that you were messing with, you weren't even the only okay, one. Right. They don't get, they don't text you right back. They don't call you right back because they have a more just like you. So a man comes along that is crazy about you and is interested in you. And I'm sorry to say, you have friend zoned the, the, the men that really you're compatible with, the men that would make a wonderful husband. A lot of you have friend zoned the good dude who's ready to be a husband and a father and give you some pretty babies. Because the other thing is, is men do not look like us. Let me be clear about this. We are the fairer sex. God created us to be beautiful, not men. If you get a pretty boy and they super fine and they in the mirror more than you, honey, rest assured, he probably got some hats that go along with that. He needs all the attention from all the women because he likes to feel like he's it. And if he is actually bigger than you, you got a problem. But the problem is you look at... <laughs> that is crazy. That is crazy. So what are you trying to say that women stay away from good looking men? And if your partner is better looking than you, then you should be afraid. This is putting, feeding women with insecurities. I have, I have seen ugly, what we would call ugly men. And I don't believe that God made women fairer. They're very good looking men that if you compare them to some women, they're just too good looking. So I don't agree with all that. And I have seen ugly men, very ugly. And when I say ugly, I think what makes a person ugly starts even with their own spirit. Cheating around, cheating like crazy. Ugly does not mean faithful. The way a person look does not mean, uh, it does not dictate how they would treat a woman. It and, is so wrong. And the fact that um, she says fairer men or fairer women, it's very subjective. Like the person that I would find attractive, you may find unattractive. Yeah. Now for you to say, oh, because that guy is so attractive, I better not like date them or be around them because they're obviously going to be cheating around and stuff like that that person could be unattractive to so many other women out there and so it's very subjective you can't there isn't like a standard <laughs> and, and another thing is you don't want a man with low self-esteem you don't I have had men that have approached me in the past and I could sense low self-esteem. Anytime you move, they worry about everything. They worry you are doing this, you are here. Someone when you are actually you. innocent. <laughs> yes, they can't rest. So you don't want that. And he's, she said, men she, who look at themselves in the mirror. I know men in my family that look themselves in the mirror. And it's called confidence. It depends who is doing it. It depends who, who and why they're doing it. You can't really say just because I look at myself in the mirror, I'm planning or strategizing something or I, I don't care anymore about you. They look at themselves, it's confidence. They are representing our family. They go out there, they don't cheat. You ask me how I know, I know. So 
most of what she just said here, I disagree completely. I have to disagree with, with hers as well. I mean, listen to this. Would you want to be with someone whom you were not attracted to? Would Think about it. Oh, you're in a relationship. How many times have you seen a ugly baby daddy with so many uh, baby mamas? See, and it all lies. And somehow he's just getting them. It all lies. It's with, not looks. Yes, it really, it, it really is beyond looks because, for one, although it is also subjective, um, who finds who attractive it is a person but yes but also you have to think about it from a personality standpoint the level of confidence char charisma plays a, a big role in it i've noticed like some guys that i you know you see them they're unattractive to you but once you start talking to them they whatever they bring to the table as far as like charisma and confidence it kind of makes you look at them a different way so it's not necessarily just appearance don't go around listening to advice like this and casting out all the good looking people in your life because of this this is rubbish advice do not apply it to your life you end up doing yourself a is it a disservice this service yes <laughs> i created this whole scenario you are the fairer sex you're the beautiful one you're the gorgeous one you're the one that men go to war over you're the one that men literally wait a minute god did not bring us on earth so we can fight each other for each other that is not the purpose the purpose here we are all we all have a purpose on our life to advance the kingdom of god not fighting over who should be with who or who should keep who that's not important god did not say relationship is about fighting it's about bringing two people two like-minded together who have the same um um how do you say the same purpose over their life same callings uh, they have this understanding what was the word i was trying to say are you guys compatible that's the word compatibility so all these things i don't know make we go now <laughs> will kill four you're the one that they're out here trying to make all this money to impress you i mean i understand what she means by um kill four let's go i don't <laughs> to get you quit compare qu quit looking at men is he six two is he look like boris kodro or idris oba or michael e lee do you know the percentages of men? This is what I just would die to say to my matchmaking clients and the people that would come in for consultations because they want to be matched. And they're coming to me. I, I'm sitting here just being a good woman. So I'm thinking these women just want to marry. These women just want a good man. No, nah, boo, that's not what they wanted. What they want is if I'm going to pay this money, I want me a Michael Ely. I want me a Boris Kojo. Well, look, boo, Boris Kojo's married. Last time I checked, Idris Elba's taken. These men are such a small percentage of the population. Do you guys understand that for a man to be over 6'2 is less than 3%? Wait a minute, bro. Wait a minute. Who is Idris? Who is Idris? Is it the only man? Is What is all this? I don't understand. I don't See? understand that just because a man is on tv he is all that they are very good handsome beautiful men that have never been on screen what is all this who is idris just because he's the only one we see on tv eh? i don't even know him so, <laughs> <laughs> so i don't care in fact my man is the most handsomest man most amazing man on this planet so leave that one who is idris why are you comparing idris who is this boy <laughs> um, he's a very good actor. <laughs> I don't care. But see, that's the thing that, um, that's, <laughs> never mind. This thing is just like, it's giving me headache. It's giving me headache. So why, why can't you use, did they go to you and ask you for an actor? Like, honestly, if they did, shame on them. Now that'd be the only man. Wait, let me, let me say, you can go on the street. For, 
God will bless a homeless man whom you used to pass by, you don't even recognize. The same homeless man become the next millionaire. All, All you women will be running after him. <laughs> what do you mean, Idris? Is it, it's money it's that makes money. anybody... If you take anybody, they get cleaned up very well. A man is a man. It's just money that makes you look anyhow. If you look at a man very well, there is... Everybody... I was about to say everybody is beautiful. But anyway, you'll find good in people. They're bringing the African out of me. Or she is. Or this whole topic is. Population, and we're talking all my... men around mm -hmm. the world. Less than 3% of the population. Now you take out the gay guys. And you take out the guys that are not black or whatever race specific that you prefer your husband to be. And you take out the men that are broke. And yeah, you take out the that. players. No, the men who are just not ready. And the, who are not ready to get married. Small. Aren't even looking for a wife. Don't, don't want that responsibility yet. Up. Think about these numbers. Less than 3%, less than 14% of the entire American male population is over six foot. Less than 14%, and that's all the married men and the men in prison, all of them girls. So you're sitting around here like, oh, he's got to be six foot, and he's got to look like this, and he's got to make six figures or seven figures. When you start at just height alone, do you hear the percentage? that I just gave you on just hype. So this is what I'm taking. The clients she had, this client came to her with these, with this request and expectation because she made it sound like they will receive this thing. Because there is no way if you sit down, if I sit down here and I tell you, I'm going to do this for you, but I'm not guaranteeing that you will get the husband you want or you will get, get blah, blah, blah. They will not come with all this stuff. But when you say, I'm going to get you high-valued men, this and that, the way you put yourself out there, you say high-value men, everybody, the strippers, everybody want the high-value men. They're going to come looking for you. And they're going to pay you, and you're supposed to deliver it. And I don't know what happened. Maybe y'all had a disagreement, and something went wrong, and it you're does, not happy. It does sound like it's from a personal standpoint, like, it was she was probably affected in some way because just the way she's explaining it sounds like it really something just went wrong yeah. but it also it really has to do with the advertising standpoint of it just height and if you add in what he looks like like looking like Idris and making money like this and that honey look Who's you looking that? for the come up for real because um, I don't know where he's at these match, I was matchmaking, I would be like, man, I would go find these incredible men. And they would be like, oh, mm, I would never date him. He, I'm like, I just went and found a freaking pilot of an ex-Falcons player. Are you serious? But he don't look, it's like, it's like he's got to be perfect. But you're not perfect. You got issues and unresolved issues and you got a temper and you're bossy and you're controlling and men don't even like to be around you long term. Everybody away. You think you're so much the ish that you're bougie and vain and stuck up and men don't like it. And you wonder why you can't keep a man. You wonder why nobody wants to be around you. Sweetheart, listen, get nice. So first of all, I want to say this. Men don't want, you wonder why people don't want to be around you. It is not that men don't want to be around you. It is good men don't want to be around you. Men can be around you. Hungry men can be around you. Good men are not around you because of who you portrayed yourself to be. And um, I, yes. what I was going to say was um, she mentioned that that the people have issues and this and that. Now, I'm not a matchmaker, so I won't really know like the process of what they go through the matchmaking. But from my understanding, if you are going to be matching two people to, uh, see, uh, to put them together because you feel that they would be compatible with one another, you would probably should have asked like what types of people they're looking for and actually when you're 
bringing the other person that you think that they would be compatible with? I just think this is one thing I want you all to know, ladies. You cannot Play God. run into a relationship without preparing yourself. Many of these women, the only reason they're having all these issues they're having and the coach is pissed off because, I don't know, maybe somebody started asking for their refunds and things didn't work out and she just decided to stop working with women. It's because all of you guys have re re unrealistic expectations because none of you guys went through training. The problem with women these days who are not really getting married getting the husband they desire a good marriage whatever they desire it's because they are not trained they are not prepared they did not go through it let me tell you if you are looking for a king you just don't go before a king you are prepared before you can come before the king you just don't wake up out of your house wear anything and go into the king's house before you come in the presence of the king you have to be clean purified shining Esther, Esther, in the book, I was just, as I was preparing you guys' course for this week, Esther um, was described as a young woman, young, beautiful, lovely young woman, woman. But even at that, even Esther was everything a man would desire. Even at that, they just didn't make her skip the line. She had to prepare herself like everybody else 12 months like everybody else get ready before coming before the king and not only that esther was beautiful she went through preparation like everybody else when they brought all the um uh all the jewelries every last one of them had to pick up to present themselves how to adorn themselves to go before the king esther went and asked hey guy what would please the king what should i wear to please the king she still asks for advice. Nobody is perfect. All these young ladies that she's explaining over here sounds like they're immature. Immaturity does not come with number. By number, I mean age. Immaturity, you can be a 50-year-old immature woman. You can be a 12-year-old, 20-year-old immature woman. Everybody needs to go training. And that's why I say this program that I'm coming up with you guys if you want to be prepared for marriage and when you are prepared preparation means making room for yourself when you prepare yourself you create room for what god has for you you can't just be wandering around and expect everything to just fall into your way so um do you have i was actually going to uh say something and then you brought it up i'm glad that you brought it up actually i was going to say like in the bible it says you can't put new one new wine in old skin mm -hmm. you can't bring a new person and say oh i match you to this person you have to study as a matchmaker you would have to study your clients and make sure and that it's I going to be a successful relationship i do not blame her the reason i do not blame her it's because when people, as a matchmaker, I don't believe, I think the process is fast. It's a business. Everybody's trying to make money and not really take people. It's not counseling. So they're not going to go take you through a counseling and say, okay, uh, tell us about your past. Well, uh, this and that and that. Okay, we're going to take you through a process of preparation, change your mindset. This is not it. This is the right way to think about it if you had him. They're not doing counseling. They're just putting people together. Y'all like each other. What are you looking for? A good, handsome man. And she's, she's matchmaking high, um, high value, as they call them, high value, hungry people. And to me, I don't see that as high value. You can have all the money and act dirty and you are low value to me. Because high value is a king. You can find a high value man who doesn't have all that money, but he carries himself as a king. So, yeah. They're not doing counseling. They're just putting people together so nobody should be pissed, okay? Sorry, sis. Sweet. Men are simple creatures. They're simple, but your standards are standardizing you right out of the game. Everybody else is... I have to be honest. She said men are simple. Yes, dealing with men 
is simple but from my own experience i'm gonna just be honest with you guys when you are getting to know anybody your husband to be anybody things will not be simple you can say things people understand it differently you have to learn study each other so you can't just say simple men are difficult in their own ways women are difficult in their own ways that's why you need preparation so you know understand how men function they're not all the same but i think i've had enough experiences to actually teach you what to avoid and what to um to accept and so think about it these are two people coming from two different worlds coming together so they're obviously not going to have like the same views i mean to a certain extent so you're going to need communication in order to be able to have that that line to be balanced so yeah. <laughs> everybody else is having babies but you steady like oh i'm not settling i'm not gonna settle i know what i deserve and and you know, even when I post those type of memes, I'm like, you know what? There's some real stuck up women right now that are about to read this and it's going to reinforce literally their false standards, their ridiculous standards. I'm, you know what? Um, I'm, I'm not going to settle. But in the meantime, boo, you're not even half the things that are, that you have on your list as requirements for a man. You're not even half those things, but you want that in a man. And you don't want to build with anybody. You don't want to build a life together. Listen, honey, you gotta find yourself a builder bear. You need to find yourself a builder boo. Okay, somebody that have, meets some requirements of who you want care in character, your values. And kind of agree with uh, build a bear, build a boo. <laughs> um, but I have my own belief that I do build a boo. I do <laughs> build a boo. Here's uh, the thing. I wrote down, I don't know why it's acting like that, but I wrote down my own ideal husband, characteristics, what I wanted. And let me tell you, God did not let me down. So it all depends. Be realistic with your standards. When I say realistic, I'm not saying limit yourself, but whenever you say, I want a millionaire, are you a, are you making six figures? Don't just, you know, throw yourself out there. Say you want a good man. When I first made my husband list, I said I wanted a business minded man. I didn't say I wanted him to be running a six figure home. Uh, business uh, or seven figure business or whatever I just said I want a business minded because I don't want to get in a relationship with someone who's not business minded then we won't agree because I have an issue with I love business so me making I made realistic uh, requests very realistic requests let me <laughs> I know so yeah you can build a bull take it from me i build a bull and <laughs> no i didn't build a bull god built my bull so don't go and feel like you should give up these are the things i'm telling you these are women that have tried things the things didn't work out for them and they went from this standard and went low on their standard just so they can get what they want that is not what you want to do i'm not saying have your standards where way above you but have your standards where they make sense they're realistic and that is one of the things uh that is one of the things i will be teaching in the book and the course that is coming up it all comes as one and i will actually be teaching you how to actually you know write down your standards as a woman and i did it i told you guys i did it and god brought my dream man who exceeded everything i um i ever dreamed of i wrote it you guys will hear my story it is a beautiful story and i can't wait to share with you all but let's keep listening to our sister
who you want care in character, your values, integrity, right? Lifestyle, goals, vision. Where are you two going together? Purpose, passion. Somebody on the, when I made this post, there everybody went off on it, said, what did you compromise on when it came to Mr. Pope? What did you compromise on? Listen, girls, I'm writing it in my book right now. I came from dating Mr. Gorgeous. I came from dating Mr. Trainer. I came from dating Mr. Baller. I was flying here and doing this and that. And at the end of the day, all of them were players. They were, I know I'm not supposed to say that word, but I don't have another word for it. Y'all want to turn hoes into husbands the same way men want to turn hoes into housewives. And that's just not. In, in this course and book that I put together for you guys, I'm going to teach you how not to attract those type of men. I, attract, I attracted all type of men toward me. But there is a way you can actually make the, you can filter out bad men. But that does not mean that when you meet a successful man, that they, they would be uh, whatever she described that you guys heard and I don't want to repeat. They are good men. My man is handsome, good looking, and we are fine with it. We're good with it. So... You can't, based on her experience, that's why I said, whoever is teaching you, yes, we teach based on our own experience, but from what angle are they coming from? They're coming from an angle that they used to be these fly girls hanging around with everybody big. Even though I, I talked to men who were way up here, but they had to meet me at a level, as in, if you don't, flow my way, I'm not flowing your way. There were men that proposed to pay me 100K just so I can lose my virginity. I say, nah. I say, nah. And I felt so powerful. So it depends on the woman who's teaching you. There are women who compromised so much and the only reason they're giving all these big men a name is that is because once you men talk amongst themselves they can talk about you once you date all of them you hang around with all of them and you realize none of them want to marry you but all of them want to use you maybe they pass message among themselves they already know you're a toy for them you can't hate them there is one woman who will come to them and they will bow down to that woman let me tell you i don't want to say my uh you know my partner's story but even his shock that when he came to me everything changed everything stopped there is one woman who every man would change for there is one woman so you can't say all those men up there are bad men they're bad because you allow them to treat you that way you allow the, you allow them to do the things they're doing to you. If you want a man to treat you a certain way, man, friend, anybody you meet, you make the standards on how you want to be treated. So, no, sis, I disagree. It works. Because until a man is ready, he is not going to choose you. It don't, you could do, it doesn't matter how you put it down in the... A man knows from the beginning. In the stories I will be sharing with you guys, I have been approached by so many men within it does the longest it ever took a man to express his feelings for me and his intentions for marriage was a little bit over seven days, less than two weeks, less than two weeks. The longest it ever took a man to propose to me is a little bit over two months and that is because actually two months and a half and that is because I was checking my time that is because he wanted to propose to me on my birthday that was coming up in two months and a half but even before that he was telling me that we should go to court and do our court 
marriage. So a man knows before. You cannot say that you have to wait whatever she said. That didn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. A man knows when they want you. It doesn't matter what kind of values. It doesn't matter how big your butt is and what you look like. Until a man is ready, he is not settling down. And Yeah, that is true also. Um, there are some men who are kids. They are not ready to... And these are men, I, like I told you, the type of men she deal with, her clients deal with, those are the type of men, they have everything, you know, they have women um on dial up you know women, just one button and the women show up those men they're not why should they settle down they're getting everything they want for free why are you chasing after them unless if god led you they are amazing men all over the place and some of those men they do get to a point where they decide to settle down but it takes god and it takes you knowing so education, you have to take the course, I'm telling you. I, I'm literally writing this. So my compromises came because I had these standards just like most of you that were way up here because I had all these experiences that created an appetite. It created a false standard in my life of what I thought I... See what I told you guys? She's talking from her past experience of what she used to do. So not all of you guys were dating CEOs and everybody. Some of you guys were dating just regular average men. So you can't carry her belief upon your head. You will punish yourself and limit yourself. Don't do that. In the course, I will te teach you and tell you what is possible for you. And there is nothing impossible with God. But then we have to be realistic. I will teach you all that. Herb, what I thought I needed. But yet it was a false standard because none of them were men of God. None of them were, were carried Pope. No. Now, you can't be going over there. You took your two legs over there to a man who's a CEO. You, find, you found him in a club or wherever you know where all these... You know, you know young ladies, they're going around looking for sugar daddies. You can't go find them over there. And then today say that they're not men of god duh duh they're not men they were not men of god you knew that but you thought you could change them or you thought you were so special that they would change for you but we all never know i mean saul changed saul changed so any man can change but it is not your job when a man loves you they would do anything for you. Take it from me. Them literally had their values. They weren't good husbands and fathers and brothers. Wait a minute. They were not good husbands and fathers. Are you trying to say you were dating married men? You were dating married men with children? Oh, okay, one sec. They don't take care of their mama. Literally, these men lacked all the values that really matter. These men lack all the values that really matter. These men don't take care of their mom. Any man with a mom who's alive and they don't take care of them, how do you expect them to take care of you? Any man who does not respect his mother how would they respect you? How did you know this? You must have dated them for a while to notice all this. So if you notice that a man is not respecting his mom, a man is not respecting his wife, a man w not caring for his kids, were you the sugar baby? Because you can't expect that man to marry you and settle down. And if that's the kind of man you were trying to match make with all these street girls that are coming from nowhere and they suddenly decide to marry a wealthy man, then this whole thing is a joke. A real big joke. 
so that same that brings me back again whoever is training you teaching you about relationships they're teaching you from their point of view their own experiences but you are not dating married men you are not dating all these other people and even if you were going from where she's saying you go and she'll bring yourself down and bring yourself to this level what is value is a high value man meaning equates to money in the bank i believe high as a christian i believe high value man is god fearing high value man is a man who respect women a man with standards as well but you can't call i call them trash i call them trash i've had men like that approach me and i walk past them and that's why maybe maybe i can be a little bit arrogant but that's how we were raised african african girls in general we were trained um by our father especially if you come from a very respected family is when you're walking past people that don't make sense don't give them your time in a marriage a husband is totally different than dudes you date out here these dudes that are just playing around a husband is a totally different animal and so like many of you i had these standards it's with it okay that's what i was committing to i played with some boy to from that instead of boys okay boy toys i played around thinking i was trying to be serious because of lust these men lacked all the values that really matter in a marriage a husband is totally different then dudes you date out here, these dudes that are just playing around, a husband is a totally different animal. And so like many of you, I had these standards. I had a type, or let's be real broad, I had type. My type was businessman. My type was CEO. My type was getting it done. My type was literally go-getter. Six and seven figure men running companies. Those are the only kind of men I was in relationships with. Okay, that's what I was com Sugar baby? To. I played with some boy toys from that instead of other boys, okay? Boy toys. I played around thinking I was trying to be serious because of lust. So many of you have fallen in lust. And then you think and now you want love and you're trying to compare it to lust. And that's not how love works. So you date Mr. Gorgeous and he's got the six pack and he's six four and he's chocolate. And then you date the Mr. Baller and he got money and you in the bins and you whipping and you frying and you drinking and dinner and whining and dining. And at the end of the day now, you created an appetite for yourself or you better yet, maybe you haven't even experienced it for yourself like me, but you want it. Clients right now, marry clients. Try to turn a hoe into a husband, and he's still hoeing around even though they're married. He's still got women on the side, and there's he doesn't want to let his wife and kids go, but yet he's still got this thing for having it on the side because he has an appetite, an appetite for it. And it's very hard to change unless someone's changed before you marry them. Values and some character. Who is this man? What does his life look like? Who is he? Because it's going to be way different. These are the type of questions they should have been asking before these people embarking on this get to know each other. I understand it's a matchmaking company, but if, if standards should have been, okay, we match you two together, you guys take the time to ask each other these questions. Not take the time, oh, we fly here. The guy will fly you here, show you all the beautiful things. You're happy, you're laughing. At the end of the day, what did you guys talk about? So I don't really blame her like I told you guys from the beginning. I don't blame her if the clients end up unsuccessful when it comes to relationships because, you know, everybody have to play their parts. And one of the parts everybody uh, especially women have to uh, to play is preparation prepare yourself if you prepare yourself well enough you will know what's good for you you will know the questions to ask the person when you get to them 
so that's why I, when i say when it comes to marriage you just don't run into prepare yourself what are the questions you have to know are you guys compatible do you feel do you have do you see signs that god is calling you to together then you're going to ways. It's going to be way different than what you've done. So my compromise is for me. I'm going to answer that specific question. I'm going to get off here because you know I'm rushing to come on and do this. My specific compromises were that um, Mr. Pope, when I met him, was not rolling in money. Um, I said I would never date a pastor, and he's a pastor, right? I was running from that calling on my life. didn't want nothing to do with that, okay? And so I accepted that calling on my own life. That's when I was prepared for my husband to come. So financially, he wasn't what I was. I just have to say, talking about bringing down your standards, I promise you, if I say this about my man, it will be such an insult. You don't say that you left the standards and brought your standards low. To marry your husband that is an insult and talk on top of that your husband is a man of god do you know that the anointing upon a man of god not even billions of dollars can buy and you said you know you had to bring your standards down that is insulting to the per to the person whom your husband is. You just insulted your husband real bad. Let me tell you. I tell you guys all this. Money is nothing. I like money. I like to make money. But money does not dictate who I am. Who I love. We, we can have all the money in the world. What dictates to me. Even as a believer. When you are married to a true man of God, that is more than billions. That is what you call high value, highly respected man of God. That is high value. You don't say you brought your standard down. That's an insult. I'm sorry. You just insulted your husband. Compared to all these useless men you've been dating all over the place. I say no to rich men. I don't go, I, ne, I, ne, I don't remember going to places because I heard there were wealthy men over there. Who are they? They're people like you. Strip money off of them. They're mere men like everybody else. He's not the CEO driven businessman. He's more artistic in nature. He's creative in nature. He's a musician. Totally different than everything I had experienced previous. Uh, I know, right? Alicia, I came, I'm just, look, I got this build up, girls, because you know I don't match y'all for matchmaking no more, so I can tell y'all the truth. I can be real and raw with it, because I don't need your money, right? I only match men. Now, you have some di So it used to be about the money. Now she don't need the money. She's letting them know, but you can tell the family, when I say family type, the family type of people, like for example, most of my followers are believers. So wherever, whatever angle I'm coming from, I'm coming from the angle of our beliefs. Even though I teach wisdom. Wisdom, you need wisdom to survive on this planet. So wisdom is not just knowing the word of God. It's also knowing how to live in this world that we're in. It's the world that our father created. So coaching and you want it raw and real so you can make some changes so you can get married hit me up lifewiththepopes.com dating coaching i do it with women all over the country to help them get their standards and principles right you can't bring my level my standards low just in the name of i want to get married nah nah so if you want relationship you want to be satisfied you want to get what you want to get Stay away from people that have already told you their background and given you enough signs and you want to go get relationship advice from there. Okay. Okay. Mr. Pope, country boy. All I dated was city men. All I dated 
was ballers and shot callers and men on the scene and that man everybody go, oh 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 he's the oh yeah he owns that and he's this and he's that mr pope is a simple man he's a simple man he's a down-to-earth man he's a hard-working man he loves god and family that's his values he loved my man is not simple high standard king high quality exceptional god fearing but nobody when he enters a room everybody shh. when he starts speaking nobody talks that's my man and he's still god fearing God and family. He just want to work and take care of his family. He ain't worried about all this that's going on out here with everybody else. He ain't a gossiper. He's not looking for attention from every other woman out here in the world. He's a down to earth good man. And the re I told you guys men are different. Men are different. They come in all shapes and forms. And they all have their pros and cons. But sometimes it all depends on our own, how we choose to view those pros and cons. From what lenses are we looking at all these things? So with that being said, we all know what side she's coming from. So don't take these types of advice, teachings, and run with them because you will really be hurting yourself. Some of you guys that have been waiting so much for a relationship, you will just end up going in circles. You will go in another circle because you, you get to a point where you want to come out of something and then this type of advice will make you go back and then you start, it's confusion, it brings confusion. I stopped matching women, hear me on this. You lights are killing me. The reason I stopped matching women is I realized I had been courting, uh, Mr. Pope had been courting me, and I, I was having new female clients, and as they were running down... So she was, she was teaching women when she just came from these type of messy relationships. So she was teaching women while she would, or matching women matching women while she was still mingling with all these men so that's how she had access to all these high end men and connect them to all these women to make an income so she wasn't even in the position to really train anybody in the right way train any woman to be a wife and as she explained earlier some of her clients started you know trying to change their partner in a relationship from keeping them from wandering around with other women and that's because you didn't know better and you put people together all of y'all didn't know better and it's not that you didn't all of y'all didn't know better it's it's childish stuff greed that was running through that so be careful who's really teaching you stuff be careful standards and what they're really wanting in a match and in a husband i realized you wouldn't even date mr pope like he's not even good enough for you that literally what you're wanting is so extra it's even beyond what i have for myself literally and i'm like boo um wait i know i make more money than you i know i'm pretty good looking and you sitting here with standards that are higher than my own. This is so not spiritual. What I see here is all about image, all about money. That's how everybody is setting themselves up on a scale. You have more money, you are good. I don't have, uh, this guy doesn't have money. Um, they're, they're not good. That means they're not good enough money means nothing you can marry a man who is who has nothing today and give him two three years you you know what they say behind every successful man there is 
an awesome successful woman the woman that you are that's why i talk about preparation the woman that you are today will determine even the trajectory in which your relationship goes in you as a woman can encourage your man to become successful you can push him you can cheer him to become the man he's supposed to be the provider he's supposed to to be so it is not all about what you first see no it's not i mean her husband is now successful so think before you teach think before you teach because what you're supposed to be teaching people is not you're teaching them you are telling them all the wrong things they're doing that you've done about you know focusing on image and money but you're not teaching them that you know the present circumstances means nothing what is important is compatibility do you guys understand each other are you guys in alignment in sync do you guys agree on these issues have you guys talked where are you both coming from there is so much to to you know to process before putting people together and saying i do Carrie Popes. I, I, I honestly, I was like, wait, I know some good men, don't get me wrong, right? But I was like, wait, she would actually turn down a date if I had put Mr. Carrie Pope in front of her, she would have turned him down. Oh, he don't make enough money, he's not this, he's not that, right? Oh, he hasn't been divorced long enough, he's not, he's a pastor. Oh, they would have turned him down in a heartbeat. And that's when I knew I had to get out of that business. I was like, I knew I had to get out. I had to get out. Because I was like, my standards of good man doesn't match what these women want as clients. So I'm not going to be able to fulfill this for them. And they're it. My standard of good man is number one, God-fearing. There are many successful, powerful, God-fearing men of God millionaires billionaires that fear the lord they don't wander around it, the, the men that wander around is the men who lack the fear of god in him so i cannot compare a good man with him being poor mm -mm. a good man you can have a poor man and he's still a dog how many poor men do you see going around um planting sperm everywhere making babies everywhere that he can't take care of poor men how many poor men do you see cheating you cannot equate good men with poverty that is not how you do it this whole thing is wrong the way you equate a good man a good man is when you see the fear of god in him it is the fear of God. The Bible tells us that the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. Any wise man has the fear of God. And when he is wise, he knows what to do that pleases the Lord and what to do that do, does not please the Lord. So he will not go around cheating on his wife because he knows it is wrong. Mess them up even more because they're unrealistic. Exactly, Monique. Unrealistic. So... I came on today to just literally lay it out for y'all on how you guys are being unrealistic. And the biggest thing I'm going to leave you with is this, is that because most of you have never experienced the love that God has for you, God's best for you, you've never experienced the love of a husband. You've never experienced deep, true love. So you have no point of reference. You All you can do and what you're doing is you're comparing these experiences to the past. She almost ended this well, but she messed up. The thing is not, you can't tell them because they don't know what they've not experienced. You're supposed to tell them the beauty of what they've not experienced so that they would hunger for it. You can't tell them what they don't have you're just making things worse. You're just making people feel bad. Here's the thing. I will tell you. The love God has for you 
is even different from the love your husband has for you. The love your husband has for you is different. But I've shared with you guys in the past few months, the love, when God chooses to show you love, when God chooses to show you love, it is more powerful than any love you could ever experience. Your partner will not give it to you. Your husband will not give it to you. The kind of love that God gives you, the joy that he gives you. You guys have seen, seen my shirt, Joy in Motion. The Lord gave me that word. There is no way I've ever thought about putting together that word. The Lord gave it to me. 4 26 2020 i keep telling you that april 26 2020 the vision i had on that day more of it is coming this week but the joy you would feel when the lord becomes your joy let me tell you there is no relationship she's i'm sorry to say this ma'am but you are still a baby in the things of the world of the Lord and you have not really gotten to that big point where you have that intimacy with God to actually know God like that. God's love is so different from the love you see from your husband. When you experience God loves, God's love, <laughs> when you experience God's love, it is a powerful thing i would sit you would call me crazy and i wouldn't care i would be the most happiest baby on this planet smiling at everybody is a beautiful day every day you can crush my car i will smile at you and say god bless you and move on that is true love and the love of god does not come alone it comes with joy i told you guys joy it is powerful you have no idea that is what i want you to hunger for past wasn't it boo the past didn't get it done the past was not your best the past if it was your best then if you'd be married to him right now and happily married so all these dudes you dated or your previous husband or whatever was not god's best for you and so what you tend to do is compare it to what you think you want, and you keep having these experiences and tweaking it. Well, I don't want that. I don't want to date a man with kids. Well, I don't want to do this. Because it's all based on your limited experiences with the ones who were not the one. And it doesn't work that way. Because every rule you could create, God has an exception for you. There's a man with kids who will rock your world. There is a man that's divorced that will love your socks off. There's a pastor that would be the very best man in the world for you. But you keep saying, I'll never date a pastor. Mm, I can't date no man with kids. No, I can't date no short man because that last time, Napoleon complex, and he was just too much. Oh, no, I can't date a man that's a workaholic, but yet you want a man to have money. Men who have are workaholics. Clue. Boo clue. This is the booze clues. Men who have money work hard for their money you cannot complain about a man being a workaholic if you want him to have money i hope that is in for somebody that's a booze clue for you okay mm -hmm. get you a boo he can be a workaholic honey you occupy yourself you work on your purpose in your business and stay busy while he's working oh then what is marriage then what is a relationship then why are we together Instead of sitting around trying to spend his money and then complaining because he ain't nowhere to be found because he's always working. He's providing that lifestyle. He's, pro he's a provider and a protector. That is... You do need to keep yourself busy. You know that. But it's all God's plan for your life. Not every woman was meant to be a business owner, a minister or whatever. Some women, God bless them to just be housewives. So you have to be able to examine yourself and see where god is leading you so whatever she say you have to be a workaholic or whatever you could be a housewife and find something to do as a housewife that still make you you know busy is ingrained in them to do so ladies and gentlemen that was it i know this was a little bit long but it was all worth it 
I want you guys to actually look forward to the new book that's coming up. I'll be introducing introducing everything this coming week. Be careful where you get advice. The reason why people are struggling with marriage today, struggling with meeting the right people. Society has changed. Things are no more the same way. Back in the days, you know someone in your community. People know each other from different communities and people will match you together. These days, it has become a little bit more difficult. And that is why, that is because we have been transformed as time changed we have been transformed and we have forgotten our way we have forgotten what marriage is we have forgotten everything that god intended this thing to be and how to actually go about it and that is why i have actually put this thing together to actually take you back let's go back to the beginning let's go back to the way things were meant to be done and when you go back to the way things were meant to be done you will always come out a winner because you're doing things God's way. Good, awesome men do exist. And handsome, good-looking, fine men, faithful, loyal, fun, happy men do exist. And you can have the full package. That is if you want to and you believe it. But if you believe these things that we just heard, you are far from it and you need to go through a process of removing all these things out. And that is what comes in this course. It is a monthly subscription where I go every week, present different topics to you guys, and we go through trainings, teachings in yeah. order to remove and basically just awesome. shed off all these fake unholy beliefs that have been invested in you by society and just your environment alone so you guys go ahead so i will go ahead and post more information in this coming week god bless you all and you guys have a wonderful day